A perennial question in library and information science is, what is information? The answer is usually provided in words. This video lecture presents a different kind of answer through pictorial metaphors. But first, as a point of departure, let's quickly review some of the best known definitions of information. One long-standing notion is the DIKW sequence. The basic idea is that data, once organized, becomes information. When understood by a person, the information becomes knowledge. After more reflection or experience, there may be wisdom. Here, information is defined within a sequence of related phenomena. One definition of information from the 1970s is known as Brooks's Fundamental Equation of Information Science. It takes a cognitive approach and locates information inside the mind, where information is defined as anything which produces a change in a knowledge structure. One very popular notion by Michael Buckland asserts that information comes in three forms. Information as process, information as knowledge, and information as thing. Socially oriented definitions of information have emerged. For instance, information is a human artifact constructed and reconstructed within social situations. Marcia Bates has developed what she calls fundamental forms of information, a more expansive conception than anything that has come before. It includes information that is experienced and embodied. These statements on information and others are all great. However, I wish to critically register the following two shortcomings. First, they are generated through philosophical analytic reasoning and result in dense propositions that can be hard to grasp. Second, they are word-based, though information is part and parcel of a highly visual multimedia society. What follows is an alternative way of understanding information based upon a visual study of information called the I-Square Research Program. It employs an empirical, qualitative data gathering method called the draw and write technique. Research subjects are given a four inch by four inch piece of paper and a black pen. They are asked to answer the question, what is information in the form of a drawing? This process generates a piece of visual data called an information square or I square for short. Over the years, I have collected more than 5,000 I squares, that is drawings of information from 12 countries in eight different academic disciplines. Let's examine a sample of I-squares. Many are literal representations of information, such as books or technologies. Others are patterns and abstractions, such as wavy or dashed lines. Some show people engaged in communications. There are also drawings that express information as a metaphor. A metaphor is a comparison of one thing to another. Metaphors are usually considered linguistic constructs made of words but they also exist in the visual domain. Known as pictorial metaphors, these drawings suggest that information is in some way like the earth, like a mountain range, or like a tree. This video lecture answers the questions, what pictorial metaphors are used for information? What meanings and values do these pictorial metaphors add to our understanding of information? And how do pictorial metaphors differ from existing definitions of information based upon words? Please see the full paper, Pictorial Metaphors for Information, co-authored with Rayo Safalainen, to learn more about the informants who drew the I-squares, the theoretical framework of conceptual metaphor theory, and the analytical strategy to identify and elaborate pictorial metaphors. This video presentation focuses only on the findings. From a sample of about 400 I-squares, 125 drawings were identified as pictorial metaphors for information. Each was named, that is, coded, with a succinct descriptive term. The 14 most common pictorial metaphors and their frequencies are shown here. From the 14, I will elaborate seven based upon their prevalence. The Earth was the most commonly rendered pictorial metaphor for information. In these visions, our planet appears at the center of the I-square as if sketched from the moon. 
arrows, lines, and dots surround the Earths and suggest highly abstract and dynamic information and communication flows. While some of the Earth drawings are uninhabited, others are populated with tiny, undifferentiated stick figures. Though the human beings are relatively small and nondescript, their presence nevertheless establishes information as a social phenomenon, since the Earth is foremost our home. A pictorial metaphor of information as the Earth showcases the magnitude of information today. Here, information is deemed vast and sprawling. It transcends states, nations, and continents. In an upbeat manner, information as Earth projects the universality of the information age and the global free flow of ideas. Information can also be cast as a web. This pictorial metaphor may come from the colloquial term for the internet, World Wide Web, coined by Tim Berners-Lee in 1989. These drawings take the recognizable shape of the orb-weaving spider with an epicenter radials and capture spiral. Or, they may be the more tangled and asymmetrical cobwebs built by other spider species. Not all, but some, drawings include human figures, information artifacts and symbols at junctures or within cells, suggesting that webs can also be containers for information as content. An association between information and a web is not new. Here's Paul Otley, the Belgian bibliographer and lawyer, considered by some to be the father of contemporary information science. In the 1930s, he envisioned a global web-shaped system of information centers. A pictorial metaphor of information as a web brings attention to the structure of information. Information is cast with a Cartesian sensibility upon a plane made of intersecting points, lines, and cells. This pictorial metaphor posits information as distributed, parceled, and spacious, rather than centralized, monolithic, and dense. A negative association is the web's function in nature as a sticky trap, a reality for anyone who has ever felt ensnared online. In fact, the medical community is moving towards recognizing internet addiction as a debilitating problem of this information age. A tree provides a rich and layered pictorial metaphor for information. In this study, many trees were rendered in a fundamental form, that is, a singular upright trunk topped with a round, bushy canopy of leaves, like the majestic oak. Similar to the spider web, the pictorial metaphor of a tree focuses attention on information as a structure. The branches and roots of trees extend in a vertical dendritic manner, dividing into ever smaller entities that inherit resemblances from their source. This form mirrors classification systems, such as those used to illustrate all forms of life, or a personal family tree. As a pictorial metaphor, trees lend other symbolic meanings to information. Sitting under a tree may be conducive to breakthroughs or enlightenment. Two famous thinkers, Isaac Newton and the Buddha, generated big ideas while sitting under a tree. In the Judeo-Christian tradition, as outlined in the book of Genesis, the tree of knowledge of good and evil grew in the Garden of Eden. In Indo-European and Native American worldviews, a colossal world tree links the heavens, terrestrial world, and underworld together. These enduring myths and visions of trees involve information in profound spiritual matters, the nature of reality, and the origins of humankind. Another recurring pictorial metaphor is information as cloud. There are many kinds of clouds, and to be precise, the drawings are puffy, roundish, cumulus clouds that float low in the atmosphere during fair weather. Sometimes, markings surround the cloud's perimeter and suggest an information process is underway. Many striking features of clouds are easily lent to information. Clouds can change shape rapidly, indicating that information is subject to constant change. Clouds can be multi-layered, suggesting that information is a complex phenomenon. Clouds have been associated with thought and states of mind, as is information. Cloud 9 is a state of bliss, being cloudy refers to confusion and melancholy, and having one's head in the clouds means an attachment to fanciful ideas. Altogether, this pictorial metaphor ties information to many aspects of human consciousness. Information as a cloud also invokes cloud computing. That is, the recent practice of using a network of remote servers hosted on the internet to store, manage, and process data. First, there was the web, and now the cloud, one can only wonder how might our information environment be metaphorically envisioned next. Another prevalent pictorial metaphor is information as box. Typically, the box is rendered as a singular cube with three dimensions. 
In many instances, it is open to reveal an inner space, whereas others remain closed and opaque. A question mark appears on some boxes, suggesting something unknown inside. The association between information and boxes may come from the library card catalog with its many box-like drawers. And to this day, archives and records, if not digitized, are kept in cardboard boxes. On a darker note, a box may belong to a famously inquisitive woman, Pandora. Though warned not to do so, Pandora opened a box and unleashed ills upon the world. This association suggests that information makes us curious and can cause serious trouble when unleashed. This certainly rings true today when rumors, conspiracy theories, or fake news wreak havoc. Eureka, another frequently appearing pictorial metaphor for information, is a light bulb. Drawn as the quintessential incandescent light bulb, it has a round glass orb, a narrow grooved neck, and a delicate internal filament. Though all lack an apparent power source, most of the light bulbs are turned on with rays of light shining outward. A pictorial metaphor of information as a light bulb assigns a functional role to information. Just as a light bulb illuminates the dark, information is seen to illuminate an ignorant mind or murky situation. In cartoons, a light bulb appears over the head of a character with an idea. Hence, this pictorial metaphor implicates information in creativity and discovery. Metaphorically, information can also be thought of as an eye. In its simplest form, the pictorial metaphor shows a single eye, and usually with its retina and pupil too. Typically, the eye is shown open wide, though one set is closed in concentration or sleep. A more elaborate version of this pictorial metaphor locates the eyes on a face and suggests other senses too. Here, information is embodied and associated not only with sight, but with smell, sound, taste, and touch. Technically speaking, eyes detect light, convert it into electrochemical impulses, and transmit these signals along the optical nerve to the visual cortex of the brain. The process of visual perception is experienced powerfully as intellectual perception or knowing. There are many iconic eyes that lend additional positive meanings to information. To the ancient Egyptians, the wedget eye or the eye of Horus signifies protection and life. And in New Age spirituality, a third eye symbolizes higher consciousness. As a pictorial metaphor, the eye associates information with focus, clarity, prophecy, omniscience, keen intelligence, and awareness. By applying the draw and write technique to information, the most prevalent pictorial metaphors were earth, web, tree, cloud, box, light bulb, and eye. Each brings a host of associations to information. Compared to definitions of information made of words, what do pictorial metaphors of information contribute? Existing conceptions locate information in a rather abstract and ahistorical space, ignoring culture and history. Yet the pictorial metaphors invoke the wisdom tradition of Buddhism, ancient Egyptian symbology, and the myth of Pandora's box. These enduring and powerful ideas bring a propitious depth and gravitas to our sense of information. Further, such age-old motifs are more easily recognized transnationally. In a universal spirit, they associate information with the broadest of all communities, humankind. What is more, the pictorial metaphors bring nature into the conversation about information. Most definitions for information cast it as man-made, abstract, conceptual, documentary, and technical. Yet the foremost pictorial metaphor was the Earth, and other images reference our planet's flora, fauna, and atmosphere. The invocation of nature is important at a time when our planet is at its most vulnerable. Finally, the pictorial metaphors for information have a perceptual immediacy and a stronger emotional appeal than verbal metaphors or other purely linguistic devices such as definitions. Such expressive visual motifs beneficially infuse the rational and staid tone of most conceptions of information with a welcome vitality, beauty, and charm. This survey of pictorial metaphors for information provides an alternative and complement to the myriad conceptions of information based upon words.